What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, having a great weekend so far. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It's time now for the Sunday edition of the Virus Update for Sunday, October 13th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, first off, welcome to my channel. You just clicked on to today's Virus Update where we're going to talk about the latest news and data on all these viruses, especially the COVID virus. The COVID virus is a virus that continues to wreak havoc all around the world, not just the United States, but really all around the world. It's continuing to disable people, it's hospitalizing people, and people are still dying of COVID. You need to be informed with what's going on with COVID and other viruses. The media doesn't really talk about it too much anymore. That's where I come and play to help keep you informed. If you want to stay informed with what's going on with these viruses, for the most part, not every day, but for the majority of the week, subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. Hit that thumbs up button. The more people that hit that thumbs up button, help me grow on the YouTube algorithm. And of course, leave your comments down below. Today, we're going to talk about a few news stories, a few various different news stories. And then we're going to take a look at some of our daily data. And then we're going to spend a good chunk of this video taking a look at wastewater, which is something we usually do on my Sunday editions of the virus update. So we'll probably spend at least the second half, if not more, of this video talking about viruses in wastewater, including COVID, RSV, you know, all those viruses. All right, starting off with H5N1, bird flu, or H5 bird flu, we'll say. U.S. has 299 dairy herds in 14 U.S. states have confirmed cases of H5 bird flu virus infections. And as we know, California has been doing really bad this past week. In fact, California, as of lately, has been reporting several human cases of H5 bird flu, which that, my friends, is not a good thing. All right, moving on over to entertainment news. Yes, sometimes we can actually branch off into different categories. First all, one's going to be entertainment news. Gina and the Champions, this is over in Ireland, Gina and the Champions cancel Opera House performance due to an illness. They don't state what the illness is. They don't state if it's COVID. We can speculate it might be COVID. And in a statement, it does say here, Gina said that a very sore throat would prevent that from happening. So it has been canceled. Something else that... um is being disrupted right now we can actually talk about sports now i don't have this up here but there have been several nhl players not all from the same team already out for illness so that's a problem and we do know there is a history of covid in the nhl and even confirmed players who are dealing with long covid i believe there's at least a couple of them i'm going to work to get them onto my website data report info. All right, I saw this uh, posted on X, the link to this. Now, this is going back to the December 14th, 2023, but I thought this would be a good idea for me to share this, to kind of raise awareness of what's going on since the COVID era started back in 2020. And it says here, what explains the COVID era increase in employment for individuals with disability? Now, this is coming from a North Carolina website. So data here is likely from North Carolina. I want you to take a look at this chart. Disability employment has risen sharply following the COVID-19 recession. Take a look at this. You can see back in 2011, there was, you know, it rose on up to 2000. 18, 2019, it dropped some in between, and it dropped going into 2020. Then 2020 hit 35%. And take a look what happened next. Kaboing! It went all the way up to 42%. Yeah, it rose a ton. Why did it rise a ton? Well, not everybody recovers from COVID. And this goes for all age groups. Now we're talking about people who are employed, but all age groups do deal with the effect of long COVID. And because of the impact long COVID has, it's so great for some people, they can't go back to work. So they have to deal with uh, going on disability. And look at that. This is only going up to 
maybe the end of 2022. It shows 2022 here. Imagine what it would look like if we have data going up to right now. I bet it's even higher than 42% the increase in disabilities. And what this basically is, is it says following the COVID-19 recession, the employed share of the working age population with disabilities rose quickly from 35 to 42 percent a seven percent point increase over two years for reference it took eight years from 2011 to 2019 for the employment population ratio to increase by six percent uh hello here we're talking about quite a few people who are dealing with some sort of a disability at this time in North Carolina and imagine if we saw data for the rest of the world oh my all right in the United States 54 million COVID cases went unreported in 2022 study says here's how to make your at-home test count and un unfortunately yes we're in a day and age where because of these at-home tests I always leave this box here for an example because we're in a day and age of at-home testing that doesn't always get reported and plus there's a lot of people that don't even bother to test this day and age. All right. COVID-19 cases during the first wave linked to higher heart attack and stroke risk study says. We showed you this once already, and it is worth showing again. If you were in the first wave, you had a higher chance of developing these symptoms. Remember, it was before the vaccine, but even people who get infected today can have an increased risk of these issues developing. All right, the NHS over in the UK issues warning to those testing positive for the XEC variant. And listen to this. The NHS has issued advice on what to do if you test positive for COVID. As experts warn, a new strain could become dominant in the UK. They're talking about XEC. Although isolation rules are no longer mandatory, the NHS advises that you should try to stay home and avoid contact with others for five days after taking your test. Hey, they're at least saying, oh no, you should just stay home for five days. It's not mandatory, but unlike the CDC here, which says, well, if you're free for free for 24 hours, you can go back out, but just continue to wear a mask. It's just totally ridiculous, This uh, these guidelines. And really, you should have to be isolated until you test negative. All right. In the United States, the National Allergy Map, 48% of the country is in the low to medium status at this time. We do see that there is some orange down in Texas area. And air qualities, what can I say? They continue to be a problem, especially in the West. But that may spread to other areas, and it is. You can see here, it's slightly better today. But still, you can really pick out where the wildfires are. Wildfires in California, Oregon, Wyoming. And then you can see here, we do have just some generally poor air quality in portions of the east, generally from the Mason-Dixon line, portions of Pennsylvania as well, on southeast, and you could even go back northwest into Ohio, and you find some oranges showing up at this time, which is generally just not good, even in the mid-south as well. Alrighty, taking a look at this, I do have another X account, which I'm going to be tweeting on this afternoon. Probably won't get the posting on that YouTube channel I have there today, but I will uh, make some post on that X account today about all things climate and weather climate data report I didn't tweet much there yesterday so I'll make up for that this afternoon all right we have to go back to Friday yes Friday because yesterday they were delayed in posting the EMS totals for Philadelphia on Friday October 11th Philadelphia had 861 EMS incidents and on Saturday unfortunately that number was 856, so 861 and 856, it's well over 800. That's not a good thing. Let's take a look at what's going on right now in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Let me refresh this to make sure it's updated, and it is. We do see there are several different calls for various different things. 12 EMS calls at the moment. Take a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania. Oh my, not one, not two, but three respiratory emergency calls and one sick person call at this time. Finally, let's take a look at what's going on up in Canada with the viral levels there. COVID-19 is moderate, flu A is low, and flu B not detected, and RSV is low at this time. Already, I said finally, because now we are going into the second half of the video where we are going to take a look at wastewater. And we'll probably look at a few individual sites. We'll spend, we'll say, how about eight minutes on 
wastewater. So after eight minutes, that will be it for wastewater. First off, taking a look at the national map from the CDC. And actually, I should scroll up. Yes, COVID community levels. The national activity level for COVID in the United States at this time is listed at low. Surprise. Yeah, look how much it has dropped. I don't think that's going to uh, continue dropping that fast much longer. We'll have to wait and see. But when we go to wastewater scan, you'll see looks like it may be starting to slow off a little bit. And if you haven't seen one of my uh, wastewater updates before, if you haven't seen this map before, there's various different colors here. The color in dark blue, really low levels of COVID. Orange is moderate to high. Red, well, at that point, you are at high levels of COVID. And you can see here, in the Northeast, New York State is doing a lot better. Exceptions can be made to northwest uh, New York. There is still a little bit, or western New York, I should say. There is still a little bit of red and orange there. Still some red and orange sites to deal with up in New England, such as Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. I'm seeing one that's bright red here. What's going on here at this one? 10,000 population, but it is dropping this time. And then you can see here, you know, as I'm just clicking along here, there are still some, like New London, Connecticut. Look at that, it's actually going up a little bit again. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And remember, with New England, it's leaf peeping season. So we could see a little bit of an increase because of that. New York City, we're seeing a lot of these lower blue shades, which is some good news at this time. Virginia, I'm seeing quite a few red sites in Virginia Wise and uh, Norton City. So that's something that's uh, rather interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on this. But as we know from the Virginia dashboard, overall levels have come down. Levels have really come down in the southeast. You can see here a lot of uh, blues, which is good to report. A lot of blues in Texas as well. Oklahoma, still seeing some light blue and some orange sites as well. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. And you can see here as I go closer to uh, Oklahoma City, we do see here while levels are dropping, they're still being listed at moderate Utah you're still having some issues as well. Take a look at this. We can see here there's still a lot of red and orange and more light blue sites popping up now. So it is improving. And Washington State, that has been stubborn high. And we can see here when we take a look at some of these areas like King, Pierce, you can see they're dropping, but not really fast. Here's one that is dropping a bit faster, which is good to report. And let's see what's going on with this furthest northwest site. And we see, look at that one. It's rising a little bit again. Oregon, you still do have some reds and some oranges. Look at this. We found a site that is rising. So, yeah, things are being stubborn in the northwest. California, we'll take a look at that on wastewater scan in just a moment. And over in the Great Lakes, look at this. Illinois, a lot of dark blues and light blues. That's something I am happy to report on at this time. That means things are dropping. Wow, look at this, Chicago, Cook County, really dropping at this time, which is some really good news. I'm seeing a red site in, what is this, Pleasance, West Virginia. Why are you just suddenly going straight upward? Every once in a while, you get a random site that goes off and does its own thing. That's why I always say, we take a look at the national level. Okay, the national level's low. Nationally, we're dropping. But if you live in this county in West Virginia, this area in West Virginia, Pleasance, don't go by the national level. For you, your chart is straight upward. It is not straight down like what's going on with the national chart, which is why I always say, if there's a wastewater site near you, check that site. That is the best way to make your risk assessment for COVID. And, well, if you have a wastewater site over on Wastewater Scan, where we're headed next, well, heck, you're really golden because if we go to individual wastewater sites on Wastewater Scan, like, for example, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, look at this. You can check several different viruses, which is mighty helpful to know what's going on in your community. Why we're looking at Harrisburg? Let's just do that. Harrisburg, moderate levels for COVID, medium, they call it. It is dropping at this time. RSD is very low, not being detected on influenza A, influenza B. Sometimes I do question when it shows nothing. HMPV is low. Norovirus is low at this time as well. No detections of MPOX and hepatitis A, there have just been a couple detections. All right, I have to show you the nationwide level. Why? Well, there's a little bit of something that's happening here. We can see here, things have been dropping, at least on this chart, since about some point in August. But take a look here. While it's still dropping, Looks like as of the last 
say, seven days or so. Seven to ten days. That drop has slowed off. Looks like it's starting to uh, bottom out. And we may go flat for a little while, and eventually we're going to start to rise again. I don't know when precisely that rise is going to be, but this is something we have to keep an eye on for COVID. RSV was starting to rise, then there's a wonky movement downward, and it's actually multiple movements. Uh, neither RSV, Influenza A, Influenza B, or HMPV are seeing their rises just yet. Norovirus is starting to see a little bit of a rise. Remember yesterday we talked about what was going on with, um, you know, they did that tweet, that thread yesterday, and they talked about how norovirus wasn't really moving much. I'm seeing a little bit of a movement here. It has gone up a little bit, the level, but what do I know? And the other viruses, we don't usually uh, focus on them too much. One of these days, I will educate myself. The Midwest is continuing to drop at this time. RSV is low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus is seeing that rise there. And now moving on to our next region, the Northeast. And this could be partly why. No, never mind. I was going to say maybe that's partly why we're seeing things slow off on the national level for COVID. But take a look here. COVID's continuing to drop. This is updated. RSV is seeing that little bit of a rise. It's extremely, it's hardly even detected. Influenza A is seeing a slight rise, as is influenza B. And again, norovirus is starting to see a slight rise at this time. When we take a look at the south, we do note here the south has slowed off. And there could be a couple of reasons for that. Maybe the people who had to evacuate in Florida, you know, they went to hotels and hotels were crowded. And maybe that's causing for there to be a little bit of spread. Also remember North Carolina, not just Milton, but Helene, that was also a problem as well. And people in that path had to evacuate. So, I mean, there are reasons here why this could have slowed off and stopped dropping. But it looks like it may be starting to drop again. RSV in the south, I've been watching that rise. And it is, I would say this may be the seasonal rise. Influenza A, not a big issue yet. Influenza B, HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus is starting to rise at this time. And out on the West Coast region, we do see here there's a drop at this time. RSV, it's very low, but it is rising slightly. Influenza A is also seeing a slight rise. Influenza B is flat at this time. And norovirus overall has been slowly trending upward with a wonky movement at the end. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. Let's take a look in California now. As promised, let's see what's going on in the eastern uh, San Francisco wastewater site. And we do note here, things have leveled off a little bit and almost looks like there may be a slight rise once again. Seeing a slight rise for RSV at this time, which goes along with COVID. You can see there, that, that's just a slight rise with COVID. Not a big issue just yet. Nowhere near those summer levels. M1's A, slight rise. Most recent update dropped slightly. M1's B is flat at this time. HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus is just rising. Actually, no. I would still say it's dropping. It's just one update that showed a slight rise. Mpox is still being detected at this time. All right, moving on. Let's go do somewhere else in the United States. How about we go out to Kansas and see what's going on there? How about we come down here to Lawrence Wastewater Facility? And I don't think we've clicked on this. Have we ever clicked on this? I don't know. Let's see here. Lawrence, Kansas. And overall, you are dropping at this time for COVID. RSV is not much of an issue. Influenza A, Influenza B. HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus is listed in the high category. And you did see a rise for norovirus. That's not good. Uh, Mpox, no detections of that. And a couple hepatitis detections that go back into, say, summertime. All right, continuing on here. Let's go down into the southeast. Let's see what's going on in Florida. How about we take a look at South Orange County, which is near Disney World. And we can see here there was a little bit of a gap in the data. But overall, low. Everything is not doing too bad at this time, which I'm glad to report about that. And let's, let's find another wastewater site in Florida where maybe the data is not so chopped off. North Miami, Florida. What's going on there? And we can see at North Miami at this time... The COVID levels are low. RSV is now listed at high. Yikes, that's not good. You can see here, yeah, it did go up. It is trying to drop, but that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Influenza A is low at this time. Influenza B, not much of an issue. 
norovirus is an issue for you as well. That is also coming in at high at this time. Mpox is listed as low at this time. And wow, a lot of detections of hepatitis A as well. All right, you know what? I'm feeling generous today. Let's continue on for a moment. Let's go up to Vermont, where leaf peeping is a big deal right now. And in Vermont, wow, your COVID levels in Montpelier, Vermont, which is the capital of Vermont, skyrocketed in September. Then they dropped some. Now they have leveled off, not dropping as fast. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. RSV is low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. Norovirus is dropping at this time. And Mpox is not much of an issue. And how about we come over here to Portland, Maine. I want to know what's going on in Portland, Maine. I'm seeing COVID list is high. Take a look at that. It is rising slightly again. RSV is low. Influenza A. Yikes. That is now listed as high. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. Norovirus in the medium category is starting to go up. And I don't know why that's not saying high because that's similar to the levels we saw in Florida. That's not good. In Miami area. And Mpox is low at this time. H. Um, hepatitis, I should say, is low at this time as well. Although there have been some detections back in the summertime. Just none recently. And we'll go to one more wastewater site. How about we go up here to South Bend, Indiana and see what's going on there at this time. And in South Bend, we do note that COVID is low at this time. RSV is low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B. HMPV is low. Norovirus is low. Uh, Mpox is low at this time. This wastewater site's doing pretty well. Hepatitis, you have to go back to summer to find some detections of that. All right, that does it for wastewater scan. And one last thing I do want to look at, because I always forget about Arizona. I really apologize. We do want to see what's going on in Maricopa County. This site is uh, dropping. Here's another site, 2.4 million population. This is big, and it's seeing a slight rise once again. That is something we will have to keep an eye on. Alrighty, folks, we've gone way over today. It's a long video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything about the levels of these viruses around the country, leave a comment down below. Give this a thumbs up. If you learned anything at all, tell me about it down below. Of course, if you test a positive for COVID, let me know about that as well. Um, and I hope you have a full and speedy recovery. So give this a thumbs up. Comments down below. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. I will see you all again next time, which I believe will be tomorrow, because we will have new numbers from BNO and some other stuff. So until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Sunday afternoon. Thanks for watching.